In the next scene, we see a carriage driving away from the castle. The carriage stopped when it arrived at its destination. Cyan stepped out of the carriage in an armor. Our boy could not believe that today was the day he was supposed to meet his father. He was surprised by how fast time went. Cyan walked up to the duke and bowed his head. Willius decided to confirm his son's decision. He asked Cyan if he truly wants to go to the battlefront. He told his son that he has one last chance to leave. With a determined look on his face, our boy told the duke that his heart lies in the battlefront. Upon hearing his son's response, Willius asked his knight to open something. Yulkin brought out a scroll. Cyan was surprised to see the scroll. He realized that it was a magic scroll. He wondered if his father wanted to summon something with the scroll. Yulkin opens the scroll and imbued some of his mana into it. Immediately he did this. A large magic circle appeared on the ground. A demonic beast slowly came out of the magic circle. The beast was huge and it had a large amount of fire on its head. The fire went down to its tail. Cyan was surprised to see the demonic beast. He realized that his father summoned a hellhound. Our boy was not bothered by the beast in front of him. He brought out his sword and took a stance. He knew that his father and the knights must have had a hard time preparing a low-ranked demonic beast from Lemia Valley. The knights placed their hands on their sword when they saw that their young master had unsheathed his sword. They got ready to strike the hellhound in case anything went wrong. Willius told his son that he has to be responsible for all his actions. He asked Cyan to prove his resolve by passing the trial in front of him. Yulkin wondered if Cyan actually saw the demonic beast in front of him as a trial. The knight had an idea about how powerful our boy truly was. A few days earlier, Cyan asked Yulkin to have a duel with him. Our boy explained to the knight that he has only three days left before his father's time limit ends. He told Yulkin that he needs someone to practice his swordsmanship with. With a smile on his face, Cyan told the knight that he wants to get a real sense of battle. Yulkin did not feel comfortable with this request. He told Cyan that it is best for him to duel with Krantz who is the same age as him. With a smile on his face, our boy told Yulkin that Krantz always runs away every time he approaches him. Yulkin already expected this because Cyan had terribly traumatized Krantz. He decided to accept Cyan's request. He told our boy that he will only fight him with his sword sheath. He told him that he will only focus on defense. He asked his young master to attack him with his full strength. Cyan thanked the knight for the opportunity. He decided to ask Yulkin for another favor. With a horrifying look on his face, Cyan told Yulkin that he must not tell his father about what he is about to witness. Cyan told the knight that he is giving him an order. Yulkin found our boy's order to be concerning. Immediately Cyan gave the order. He rushed to attack Yulkin. Our boy easily closed the gap between himself and the knight. When he got close to Yulkin, he swung his sword. Yulkin easily blocked the attack. Although Yulkin blocked the attack, he noticed that the hit was heavy. He could not believe that a 10-year-old was able to land such an attack. While the knight was in position, his young master disappeared in front of him. Yulkin was shocked to see this. He could not believe that Cyan was actually quite fast. He quickly turned around to block Cyan's attack. To his surprise, our boy was not on the ground. Cyan was above the knight. While he was in the air, Cyan attacked the knight. Yulkin was able to turn around and block the attack. Our boy began to attack more aggressively. Yulkin was able to block the attacks. Our boy took a stance and decided to deliver one final hit. Unfortunately for him, Yulkin was able to block his attack. Upon seeing that he could not win the knight, Cyan placed his sword back into its sheath. He thanked Yulkin for his efforts. Cyan already knew that he could not win. He simply wanted to test his strength. While breathing heavily, Yulkin congratulated his young master on his progress. The knight could not believe that his weak young master had grown so powerful. Although only three days had passed, Yulkin could tell that the current Cyan was already strong enough to overcome any trial placed in front of him. The demonic beast glared at our boy. It decided to attack him. Cyan took a stance and got ready to cut the demonic beast. When the monster got close to our boy, he swung his sword and cut one of the monster's eyes. The demonic beast stumbled and crashed on the ground. Our boy knew that it would be stupid for him to prolong the fight with his current strength. He decided to end it quickly. He wanted to end the fight with his next attack. The monster stood up and got ready to attack our boy. Before the monster could take a step forward, Cyan closed the gap between himself and the monster. Our boy stabbed the hellhound in its neck. Upon seeing that it did not die, Cyan jumped and threw his sword at the monster's head while he was in the air. 
The sword went through the hellhound's head and ended its life. The knights were shocked to see this. They could not believe that a ten-year-old actually killed an hellhound. The duke smiled when he saw what his son had done. Cyan was sad to see the blood of the hellhound on the ground. He wanted to get some for himself, of course. He knew that people would treat him like a crazy person if he was to actually take some blood. Our boy took out his blade from the monster's head. Willius clapped for his son. He commended our boy on his achievement. Cyan was surprised to see his father clapping. The duke turned around and told his son that he will see him at the battlefront. Cyan bowed his head and thanked his father for his help. As Willius walked forward, Hiram came out of her sword, with a look of anger on her face. Hiram asked Cyan if she is a kitchen knife. Cyan asked the demonic sword to tell him why she is asking such a question. Hiram told her master that he needs to use her. She told him that she needs blood to gain more strength. Kira moved close to the hellhound's corpse and begged her master to allow her have one gulp. Cyan did not feel comfortable with Kira begging him. He asked her not to worry. With a serious look on his face, our boy told Kira that they are going to a place where he is going to use her to his heart's content. He told Kira that she will enjoy their next destination. In the next scene, we see ogres appear in an area. The knights in the area rang a giant bell to alert the other knights. Willius asked his knights to set up a line of defense and take care of the ogres, he asked them to slaughter all the ogres. The duke ordered his men to activate a spell called Restraint of Salvation. Immediately he said this. Some knights raised their swords up, a large magic circle appeared in the air. The light from the magic circle blinded the ogres. Before the ogres could move forward, a magic circle appeared below them. The magic circle released some ropes made of light, this ropes restrained the ogres, immediately the ogres were restrained. The duke ordered his men to attack. The knights followed their master's order. They used their swords to tear through the ogres. The knights easily cut off the heads of the ogres. While the knights were fighting, one of the heads of the ogres landed in front of our boy. Emily was terrified to see the head. She cried out with fear in her voice. She looked up at her young master who was on a horse. She asked Cyan to tell her why he came to such a terrifying place. Cyan did not know what to say, as our boy looked around, he felt nostalgic, he never imagined that he would return to the front line again. Willius moved close to his son and asked him about how he is feeling, Cyan told his father that he feels a bit nervous to be on the front line. Willius made his son understand that anyone can die at any time in the front line, he asked his son to never let his guard down. With a smile on his face, Cyan told his father that he will be careful. In the front lines, it is a common thing for people to die. At least, three to four battles take place in a day. Each of the battles has its own detailed response manual. The response manuals usually have advanced knights as the main attackers. The advanced knights take care of all the monsters that try to cross the front lines. After the battle was over, the knights returned to the camp. Cyan poked his head outside through his tent. Our boy was given a tent in the rearmost area. This is the safest area. When Cyan looked outside, he knew that it would be hard for him to escape especially when he has well-disciplined guards watching his tent, our boy knew that he might not get a chance to feed Kiram. He wondered if he needed to wait to dinner time before he made his move. While thinking of his next step, Cyan noticed that Emily was shivering under a blanket. He asked his maid to tell him why she is shaking. Emily poked her head out of the blanket and reminded Cyan about the Duke's warning. She told him that they can die at any time. Cyan was annoyed to hear this. He asked Emily about why she does not want to leave. Emily was annoyed to hear this. She yelled at her master. She reminded our boy that he cannot do anything without her help. With a look of anger on her face, Emily told her master that there is nobody to take care of him in a place filled with monsters. Cyan became nervous when he saw the look on Emily's face. The maid decided to head out of the tent. She wanted to get her master's food. As Emily walked out of the tent, our boy asked her about the cape he requested. Emily simply ignored her master. Cyan was annoyed to see this. He wondered if he should just chase his mate away. He could not believe that she was serving her master so poorly. The scene shifts and we see Cyan setting up a doll as his replacement. After carefully putting his doll in the bed, Cyan decided to leave his tent. Before he could take a step forward, Emily woke up. She asked her master if he is going to train. Cyan told her that he is. Emily was surprised to hear this. She could not believe that her master wanted to train in such a place. Emily told her master that his father will be proud of him if he finds out. Cyan was not moved by Emily's praise. He covered his head with a hood and asked Emily to take care of things. Before going out of his tent, 
Cyan reminded his maid that he is supposed to be asleep, Emily asked her master not to worry about it. Although it was late, Cyan knew that the security is tight at night in the front lines, he decided to move carefully, our boy knew that this was the best time for him to move freely, while running, our boy noticed that he had reached the end of a cliff, he jumped and activated the third move of the thick fog. This move is known as Fog's Descent. This technique allowed our boy to easily land on the ground. When Cyan landed on the ground different monsters surrounded him. Our boy remembered that a lot of monsters lived in the area. Cyan realized that he was in the right place to feed Kiram. He called out to his sword. Kiram became excited when she smelled a strong scent of blood. She began to release a large amount of energy. She told her master that she can no longer hold herself back. She begged him to cut something quickly. Immediately she said this. A large amount of hellhounds rushed to attack our boy. Cyan took a stance and told Kiram that he will be granting her wishes. Immediately he said this. Our boy tore apart the first monster that came close to him. He activated a technique called Rushing Fog Storm. Immediately he activated the technique. He tore through the hellhounds. After defeating the monsters in the area, Cyan stabbed one of the hellhounds with a stick. He used the stick to get some of the monster's blood into a cup. When our boy drank the blood, he felt refreshed. Kiram told her master that she finally feels alive. Cyan was happy to hear this. He told Kiram that they should continue training. Kiram asked her master if they will become stronger by fighting such weak monsters. With a smile on his face, Cyan asked Kiram not to worry. He told her that the night is young and there is still a lot of monsters left. When Cyan turned around, we see a large amount of demonic beasts gathering in the area. The demonic sword became excited when she saw the monsters. In the next scene, we see a bunch of knight guarding a girl in a carriage. The girl's maid told her that the front line is dangerous. She begged the girl to turn the carriage around. The girl asked her maid to stop treating her like a child. She told the maid that she is the royal princess of the empire and she must assist her father during his tours. The princess told her maid that she will get angry if she hears one more warning. The maid apologized to her mistress. She decided to share some information with the princess. She told the princess that the youngest son of the Vert family is on the front lines. She told her that Cyan is the same age as her. The princess was surprised to hear that the duke actually took his youngest child to the front lines. The maid told her master that the duke did not take Cyan. Instead he volunteered himself. The maid told the princess to do her best to get along with Cyan since they are the same age. The princess told her maid that she is not interested in such trivial things. She told her that she wants to get some sleep. The maid apologized to her mistress for disturbing her. Before sleeping, the princess asked her maid for our boy's name. The maid told her mistress that our boy's name is Cyan Vert. The princess was surprised to hear our boy's name. She repeated it to herself. Guys we have come to the end of our video. If you guys want part 4 of this recap, let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button for more recaps. See you guys later.